You're watching ZTV. You're watching ZTV. It is Tuesday, April 9th, 2019. Today's my brother's birthday. Happy birthday, brother. And I want to talk to you about spiritual transition and some revelation that the Lord gave me recently. And um, we're going to work out of Hebrews. So let's go ahead and give thanks. Lord, we just thank you for revelation. We thank you for the spirit of revelation. We thank you for your voice. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're willing to speak to us. You love to speak to us. And as long as we seek you diligently, that you will unleash the secrets of the heavenlies to us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that the things revealed belong to us and our children for all generations. We ask that this um, seed of the word go down into our spirits and that it be firmly planted so that it can bring forth abundant harvest in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you for being our Father, for being our Savior, for being the lover of our souls, our healer, our deliverer, and everything else that we need. I declare this all by faith and seal it with Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Um, I want to talk to you about entering into his rest. I, I, the Lord told me um, Saturday night I saw 11, 11, and then Sunday morning I saw it again. And when I used to see that, knowing that, you know, most people who do dream interpretation and stuff like that, they have a consensus that 11-11 means spiritual transition. And when I used to see that all the time, I used to immediately fall into fear because transitions are often hard, right? But I have learned, because I've grown up, I'm an adult now, um, that spiritual transitions or any type of transition doesn't have to be difficult. It has a lot to do with how you are looking at things and how you perceive things, what your expectation is. So we know that biblically hope means confident expectation. So if you see 11-11, you think, oh, transition, great, I'm about to go through a trial. Um, then that's what your expectation is going to produce for you. It's going to be as difficult a situation as you expect it to be. But I have made the shift to say, all right, I'm looking forward to the new things I'm going to learn from the Lord. Because when he's taking you through a spiritual transition, he's doing it to level you up. So when I did my last um, Facebook Live a week or so ago about that revelation I got about how our faith can control time, can have a step outside of time, that came from the Lord um, saying that he was going to give me a faith upgrade. And um, it started with him showing me 1111. So when you see 1111, you can generally say, yes, it does mean spiritual transition, but you also want to ask him what it means for you. So like I said, now... I am not panicking when I see that combination of numbers together. I know to pay attention to the Lord for a second, and he's telling me what it's going to bring. So last time it brought um, a faith upgrade, which was awesome, and you can go back and find that video in my videos on this Facebook page. And this time it brought um, some greater revelation. So I'm always studying something, which is what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to seek the kingdom first so that he can give you all that other stuff, and I want the stuff, so I'm constantly seeking the kingdom. And he's always given me revelation, and I was sharing with um, a, a friend, Selena, earlier that, you know, I get all this revelation and stuff, but then the enemy comes, and they just batter me so hard. A lot of times I get all this revelation, and I'm like, well, Lord, it doesn't, it's not profiting me. It's just bringing me to attack. But the Bible tells us that that's going to happen. It says when the sower sows the word, and when the word is sown, the first thing that happens is the enemy comes to steal it, because they don't want the revelation seed to go down into your spirit and be firmly planted so that it can produce a harvest. Because if it produces a harvest, then you start living kingdom life. Because remember, the kingdom is, out, is inside of you. So when the seed of, of revelation goes down inside of you and it's planted in your spirit and it's firmly planted and it brings a harvest, then you start living kingdom life outwardly as well as inwardly. And that messes up their whole system. They have a failing system anyway, but it still messes up you know, what they're trying to do in the meantime. So I get all this revelation because I'm always reading the Bible and spending time with the Lord and stuff, and they just batter me, batter me, batter me. So some stuff, I run with it, and it's good, and it makes a difference because I fight off the enemy as long as it takes. Other things, it's like they batter me so hard. I'm just like, okay, thank you for sharing that with me, Lord. It's a wonderful secret to the kingdom, but, you know, it's not worth the, the hassle that the enemy's putting me through. So I have left things in the past. Well, I'm stronger now in faith, and I, and I am not as much of a wimp as I used to be so I can fight and resist the enemy a little bit longer than I ever have before which is what you have to do when the Lord gives you revelation you have to resist the enemy as long as it takes because as long as you don't give up you're going to get the harvest of the word they will eventually give up the problem is you just have to be able to stand as long as it takes and sometimes they are 
you know, so invested in making sure you do not get a harvest of the revelation that you see, they're going to throw, receive that they're going to throw everything at you that they can, and it's going to be overwhelming. For instance, like right now, these past couple of weeks, I've had amazing revelation and um, just ridiculous amounts of demonic attacks. It's not causing me the type of grief that it used to cause me in the past because I understand what's happening here. You know, they want me to fall away from the word as I have in the past, you know, getting choked up by the cares of life and all that stuff. Well, at this point, I'm not willing to do that because I have seen amazing things at the end of this if I can just hang on. So it's ugly. It's uncomfortable, but I am determined to win this time around. I have to win this time around. And I've been winning little battles at a time moving forward. And I have kind of been being sassy with God. I was telling Patty Cake that yesterday that, um, you know, the Bible says that from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Okay, so whoever's the most violent, whether it's the enemy who's the most violent against your revelation or you being most violent against the enemy, that's the one who's going to win. But you have to be violent with your faith and with your willingness to stand until you receive the manifestation of the harvest of the word that you sowed, right? So I've kind of been getting sassy with God and I'm like, you've been giving me all this revelation for years and yet here they are still attacking me, still attacking me, still attacking me. I want a victory. And he's like, boom, okay, I'll give you a victory. So I don't know if it's like you have to get to this place where you're so frustrated that you want to be yelling at God or what it is, but it's working right now, so I'm doing it. Now, I'm not recommending that you get sassy with God. I'm just telling you what I have done over the past couple of days, right? So here's an example. On Sunday, I was um, out of town, and I was at a crash pad, and a crash pad is like a, a place where people stay, you know, when they're just like in town for a little minute, and it's lots of different people there, so it's like not like a commune. It's a crash pad. I don't If you know what a crash pad is, it's a crash pad. So anyway, for like flight attendants and, and people who travel all the time and work for airlines and stuff like that. And so this lady was snoring so heavily. And I knew she was going to snore because she was a larger woman. And I knew she was going to snore, right? So in the beginning, she didn't snore. But then at like 1 o'clock in the morning, and I had to get up at 5.30, she starts snoring. like, And it sounded like a geese call. If you know what a geese call sounds like, that's what it sounds like. And I was so irritated. And I was like... Finally, I just decided to pray and take authority over it. And I'm like, look, this is what needs to happen. So she kept snoring for like an hour and it wasn't working. And I'm like, Lord, I know the keys of the kingdom. I know what the word says. I know what kind of dominion I have. I know this, blah, 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 blah. Boom, the snoring stops. And I'm like, why did it take me getting frustrated at the Lord and kind of demanding that he back up his word for something to happen? I don't know why it had to get like that, but that's what happened. I was yelling at him. I was like, I'm a kingdom citizen. This result is not kingdom life, and I want it fixed right now. And boom, it was fixed. So like I said, I'm not telling you to get sassy with the Lord. I'm just telling you what, what I did and what I have been doing the past couple of days to get through the things that I need. Again, yesterday, I had some plumbing issues in the house and had this appointment scheduled since last week. I came in from out of town to make sure I could be here for this appointment yesterday. And um, they call like a little bit before they're supposed to be here and say, oh, we're not coming. The job we're at is taking too long. We'll have to reschedule you till Wednesday. And I'm like, no, I can't deal with this any longer. So again, I'm getting sassy with the Lord and I'm like, this is what I want. This is what needs to happen. This is ridiculous that blah, 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 blah. And boom, they get a text message that says we're on our way. Again, not telling you to get sassy with the Lord. I'm just telling you, I don't know what it is. It's like you almost have to be frustrated at some point, you know, so it's, it's not even desperation. It's a little bit different than desperation. Frustration and desperation are different. Like, I know what it means to be desperate and get stuff through faith that way. But this is like frustration. Like, this word is supposed to be working and it's not. I want it to work. And then it works. So I don't know. It's just something to think about. And you may have experienced similar things in the past. But I don't know. It's just like, I don't know why the Lord does that sometimes. Why can't he just be like, okay, you asked for it. You believe you know, I've been walking with you in faith for all this time. I'm going to do it because I know you believe. No, it's like you have to yell at him. Don't yell at him unless you all have that type of relationship. And then he's like, okay, you know, angels, go do what she needs done. I don't know. Hopefully he doesn't see me as a nagging wife, you know? All right, so we're going to look at Hebrews a little bit at the end of three and then into chapter four. And we're talking about laboring to enter into the rest. So like I said before, the Lord showed me, indicated to me, Saturday night and Sunday morning, I'm about to level you up in the spirit again. So I'm like, oh, okay, yay. I'm excited about that. I'm looking forward to it. And then the revelation came this morning around um, 1.25 a.m. when I was um, 
I wasn't actually praying yet. I was getting ready to start praying at 2 a.m. But he starts speaking to me before that because he's awesome. So the end of three says, I'm just going to start early just because the word's good and it doesn't matter where you start in. It's just profitable for all things. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. So our assurance is our confident expectation, which is our hope, which is the substance of faith, right? So basically saying you have to hold fast to your faith from the beginning all the way to the end. While it is said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. Who provoked him when they had heard? Indeed, did not all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? So he's talking about the Israelites when they were coming out of Egypt. They provoked the Lord. They heard the word, they heard the promise, and they doubted. So they provoked him. And then with whom was he angry for 40 years? Again, with the Israelites. Was it not with those who sinned, with those whose bodies who fell in the wilderness? So you have to think about that. This is one of those dilemmas that we face trying to um, step out of the natural and fully live a spiritual life is that we get these promises from the word and we have so many of them because the Bible is full of them. Somebody said there's like eight to 10,000 promises in this word. Not all of them are eligible for everybody, of course. But um, when he, the Lord speaks something, when he speaks a promise to you, when you read it in the Bible and the Holy Spirit flips the switch and you're like, ooh, I want that. You're immediately supposed to believe it. No doubting whatsoever. If you do anything other than just believe it and start to receive it and try to move forward from then, it's sin. That's what we just read right here. So from the beginning, when he says something, boom, it's supposed to happen. God has complete expectation that everything he says to you, whether it's through the written word or whether it's through rhema, is going to come to pass. Remember, he said, light be, it came. There was no doubt in his mind that, ooh, that might take a couple years. That might take... 10 years, that might take 30 years. Oh, it might happen, it may not happen. No, God fully expects everything that he speaks that it's going to come to pass. And manifestation is going to follow. It's you who determines when and if, right? You have to believe it. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. If you say, ooh, I don't know, that's kind of tough. You just fell into sin because you doubted him, right? And I do this myself. You know, I used to always be one of those people asking for confirmations and trying to fleece the Lord and stuff like that. Fleecing the Lord is Old Testament. I've got a greater covenant. I'm not supposed to be fleecing the Lord. I'm supposed to believe what he said and move forward, especially if it's something that is in line with the word, you know. And you should know whether something that you are hearing or something that you're being told is in line with the word or not because you should know the word well enough because I'm teaching adults here. These, we're not children, right? We may be children in the faith, but we're old enough to know that we have to constantly stay in the word. There's no way we can fight all the mess that the enemy brings to us, not to mention all the stuff that goes on in the world without constantly having our minds washed by the water of the word. All right. So, and to him, to whom did he swear that they would not enter his, enter his rest, but those who would be, but those who were disobedient. So we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. Okay. So the Lord was trying to teach me this in 2016. It was the year 5777. And I got a little bit of it, and I have a teaching on this, entering into this rest, and I'm going to post, find the video, and see if I can post it on, it'll be posted on, um, I don't know, one of my websites, oh, it'll be posted on ZM7 Academy, got US, I'll post it there. So I'm going to try to find that video and explain it, and I know that I have way more revelation now than I had back then about entering into God's rest, but that's okay. It's a start, right? So... Therefore, this is moving into chapter four. Therefore, let us fear if we have a promise remains of entering into his rest. Any one of you may seem to have come short of it. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us just as they also did. But the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. Okay, so this is the thing. You hear the word. It's a seed that goes down into your spirit. As long as you water it and you have to protect it, it's almost like you have to be like a hen and sit on top of the dirt because the enemy's coming to steal it. They want that word so badly. They do not want it to profit you. They do not want it to harvest you. And that's what I was saying at the beginning of the video. I get all this revelation from the Lord and it's good stuff and I get so excited. I'm like, ooh, my life's really going to be great after this because this is important information. And then the enemy comes and batters me. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, forget this. I just need to try to make it through. And so I go back, you know, to, to the revelation that I've had in the past. But don't do that. I'm recommending that you don't do that. You have to withstand and fight the enemy, resist them as long as it takes to make sure that every seed of revelation that you get harvests for you. Okay? So for we who have believed enter the rest, just as he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has said somewhere concerning the seventh day, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. 
And it's so funny, right here in my Bible, next to that portion I have the word revelation, because I got it. I, I understood it. So last night, at 1 something a.m., I'm asking the Lord, but how do you enter into the rest? And the Lord explained it to me. Okay, so this is how it goes. So the rest is a place of blessing for the Lord, right? Okay, it's a place of blessing. So the rest is like the Garden of Eden. And that's what we're supposed to be doing on the earth. We're supposed to be um, correcting everything that's wrong and making it like the Garden of Eden again, right? Because Adam and Eve lost it. So when they were in the garden with God, they were in his rest. They were completely blessed. They had every need met. They didn't have any sickness. They had absolute communion with him. And the way the Lord brought it to me was like they were in a bubble of communion with him in the Garden of Eden, right? So when you enter into his rest, what that means is labor to enter into his rest means that you have to do whatever it takes to get into a place of a bubble of communion with the Lord so that you're constantly in that place of protection because it's a place of blessing and that's where you have all of your needs met everything's working for you you're walking in dominion you're walking in authority you're exercising the keys to the kingdom you don't just hold, have possession of them which is what the lord told me last week you don't just have possession of the keys of the kingdom you're actually walking through the earth and opening doors and making the garden of eden follow you out as you go through into new areas new domains and new territories i hope that makes sense to you it's kind of big but it's exciting and it's good right okay so again i'm gonna start again and say it again so i asked the lord i understand that i need to enter into your rest to make it into this next level of blessing but how do i labor to enter into your rest because it's not the same thing as just working your day-to-day -day job and that's one of the things that makes things so complicated because you have day-to-day -day work that has to be done but you also have to somehow labor to enter into that place of extraordinary blessing which is that bubble of communion with god most high right? You're supposed to labor to enter into a place of communion with God of heaven and earth, just like Adam and Eve had. Think about that. That's serious. How do you get to that place of communion? I don't know how to get to that place of communion just yet, but I'm trying to get there, right? Get to a place of where you're in this complete bubble of communion with God most high. You know how to get your needs met. You're not like, oh, shoot, Lord, this bill is due in five days and I don't have the money. Where's that going to come from? That's not an issue for you because you're in the rest. You're in that complete Garden of Eden-like bubble of communion with the Lord. How in the world do you get there? How do you get there? I don't know. You just have to fight for it, fight for it, fight for it. Now that you have the revelation of that's what's required, you have to fight for it, fight for it, fight for it until it harvests. So this revelation that I'm giving you, that in order to enter into his rest, in order to enter into a place of complete blessing of the Lord. So this is those first 14 chapters of Deuteronomy. This is Proverbs 10, 22, right? This is kingdom and authority. You know, Jesus said, and nothing can by any means hurt you. In order to achieve that, you have to enter into a bubble of communion with God most high. And then you have Eden on earth, right? So... It has to be possible if he said it here in the word because the word is true. All of it's true. He's not lying. It can't return void. He's alert and active watching over it to perform it. So there's a way to make it happen. So I just sowed you a seed of revelation. So it's up to you. The seed has gone down in your spirit because that's where seeds go. It's up to you to fight the enemy who's going to fight you like crazy so that you don't harvest this communion. Because once you get in that bubble of communion with them... They can't touch you, right? They absolutely cannot touch you unless you say yes to them. Because that's what Adam and Eve did. They said yes. So as long as you don't say yes, once you get in there, you have every need met. You have healing. Your body works how it's supposed to. Like Genesis 6, 3, you're going to live your 120 years because God says I will satisfy with you with long life and and all that good stuff, well, your long life, according to the word, is 120 years. You know, most people have the mindset that they're going to die, like, you know, 100 or less, but that wasn't God's intention. But that's what this getting into the bubble of communion is all about. You have to completely flip your mindset while you're in this natural world, working, living, taking care of your family, hanging out with your friends, watching TV, all that stuff. You have to somehow... Change yourself into the person who seeks after that bubble of communion to receive a complete 
and perfect blessing of the Lord. I don't know. It's a lofty goal, but it's out there and available for us. He says right here in the Word, labor to enter into my rest. Right? That's what you do. That's what you do. And just a reminder, where it says here in chapter 4, it says, and after the seventh day, the Lord rested from all his works. Remember, all of the stuff that we want done in earth, he already did that. He already did it. He already did it, already did it, already did it, already did it. So you know how we like to say, oh, the Lord is doing this, or the Lord's going to do that, or, you know, I'm hoping the Lord will. He's done with his stuff. You just have to pull from the spiritual and bring into the natural. Remember, he's already in the period of rest. He's in that period of communion already. He's just waiting for you to join him there. And so you can receive that inheritance and all of that stuff. It's wild, it's big, it's complicated. And that's why I'm saying, like, this is the type of stuff that the enemy fights tooth and nail. This is why, like, I'm like, when I get revelation like this, sometimes I, I'm like, ooh, excited about it for a couple days, but then the enemy's like, boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, forget that. I like the little bit that I get from God. But no, we have to go after the full blessing of the Lord. The full blessing of the Lord. Divine healing and health so that you're not sick, any of that. You know, everything that you need, like there's a scripture in Isaiah, I think it is, where God says, I'm going to answer them before they ask. That's from the rest. That's from that bubble of communion, right? How do we get there? It's tough, but you got to, I mean, it's possible or he wouldn't have said it was possible. That's the thing. So you can't doubt it at all because you've heard the word. You, I got it right out of this. I wasn't making stuff up. I wasn't pulling things out of my neck or anything outside of my neck, anything like that. It's all in the Word. Those things are all in the Word. So you can strive for that, but you also have to know that you're going to have to resist the enemy as long as it takes until you re receive the harvest. Because I'm just giving you the seed. Right? Which is what revelation is. It's a seed. It goes down to your spirit. It's up to you to guard it with everything you have until you receive a harvest. That right there is some good revelation. Because think about all the revelation we've gotten over the years and We've just written it in journals and just left it there. No. Go back and get that stuff. Go back and get it. Speaking of, I started another journal yesterday. So now I've got like 15 active journals. And this one just has, um, this is like probably the third journal that I have that's like this. But it's just scriptures from when I'm reading the Bible. And I'm like, ooh, I love that scripture. So sometimes when I want to be praying and I don't really, I'm not really praying for anything specifically or um, I kind of just want to be communing with the Lord. I pull out one of these journals that just has scriptures in it and just read those scriptures. Because when you're speaking the word out loud, God will come and he'll meet with you. He always does, I'm telling you. And it's awesome. All right? But that's part of being in that constant communion with him. Right? That's what I'm working for. That's what I'm seeking. And so, if you could all pray for me real quickly. You don't have to be praying for me on a constant basis. But just while you're here watching this video, that would be awesome. So that... I have the strength and the power and the might of the Lord to resist the, the devil and the enemy every time I receive revelation so that I can um, maintain it all the way to harvest and not just receive it from the Lord, but let it die a small plant, right? I want that hundredfold every time. And I want to get to that place of communion in the, in, you know, in in God's presence so that when he gives me revelation, the enemy is too afraid to come after me to try to steal it because I'm so close and just so wrapped up in him. Lofty goal, like I said, but nonetheless, it is possible or it wouldn't have been there in the word for us. All right. I bless you in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you please seal this word that I have released, this revelation that I've released. Seal it in me, but also seal it in anybody who is willing, anybody who says yes and amen to it. And Lord, we just ask that every seed of revelation that you have sown to us in the past, that's still just sitting in our spirits dormant, that we begin to um, call it up, that we begin to revisit it and um, fight all the way to harvest so that we can receive everything that you've promised us because you've promised exceeding abundantly above all we could think, hope, or imagine, according to the power at work in us. And that power is great because it raises the dead. 
All right. Thank you so much. Don't forget to visit me at ZariBanks.co and buy some books from Supernatural You Books. Info. Also, if you're interested in the video that I made from 2016 about entering into his rest, like I said, it's going to be um, lower revelation than what I gave today because I know more today than I knew back then. I knew that I had to enter into the rest then, but I didn't know exactly what that looked like. I know what it looks like today. And that's one of those things that I'm talking to you about in this video. See, the Lord started to try to teach me this stuff back in 2016, but something came up and I was like, this is, I got to focus on just getting through life and I can't chase this with you, Lord. Okay, well, I've got to chase it now because I'm at that place where things are good, but I want the amazing, extravagant, blessing i'm talking about where it overtakes you and people are dropping cars off in my driveway type of you know walking in the blessing type of thing you know okay so i'm going to try to find that video it's one of those videos that uh, says 5777 on it so if you see that when you go to zm7academy.us and you go to the videos if you see that there that's the one it is so just um you can spend some time watching that if you if you'd like to but like i said it's gonna be a little bit lower revelation because it was back in 2016, I know a little bit more now. So this revelation was a little bit deeper. And uh, it, it was heavy. It was heavy. It, this is some deep stuff. I don't know why I get this stuff. Why can't I just get some little revelation that the enemy's like, ah, we don't need that. And leave me alone. But that's not how I get it. So, got to fight. All right. I bless you in Jesus' name. Fight, resist as long as it takes to get a harvest of any revelation that you have. And think about that. If you have gotten some revelation over the last couple of weeks, and the enemy's already coming after you for it, that means that it's going to be good on the other side. Just fight him, 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 do whatever you have to do. And I know it's hard. Listen, I know it is so hard because like even now, it's like you have to be to that point where you're like, you've got scriptures playing and stuff all night on the Bible while you're just trying to sleep so that they can't even bother you during your dreams and stuff and get you distracted. You know, it's, it's real. And then not only that, you have to go to work. And a lot of us work in front of people where you have to be out dealing with the public and stuff like that. It's hard, you know, to stay in that thing because the enemy will drop a person in to cause you problems right in the middle of your normal work day because they want to get you messed up so that you have to focus on something else and forget about the revelation. Oh, that reminds me. I'm sorry. I was about to stop. But let me tell you one more thing. So I was listening to, I watched Bill Winston. You know how he has his uh, um, Joseph Business School? Well, every year they do this business conference, and I was watching um, his, his, his sessions, and there was a guy on there named Bill Walton. I think he was from Texas. He's from somewhere in the south in Bible Belt. But um, he was saying that he had a business. He quit his job and had a business. His wife was the only one who was working, and they were really struggling. And so he was asking the Lord, what am I missing? I'm, you know, I'm tithing. I've got all this stuff in place. So what is it? And the Lord gave him some revelation that he had to fight for tooth and nail so that his business began to prosper. And what he said was the, the revelation that the Lord gave him was you need to believe um, the blessing of the Lord is true and that it's available for you and you need to meditate on it. And I posted his quote on my Facebook page last week when I saw it. And he was saying that you have to meditate on and murmur those first 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28 every day before you go to work. And I've been doing this and it is, it's like people think the, the Jabez prayer is good and it is, but I, when I pray the Jabez prayer, I don't know if it's because I don't have as much faith in it, but I have a uh, great faith in this for whatever reason. And I saw, um, immediate manifestation like that same day, um, that I, the first day that I prayed this and then I went into our bakery. I saw a difference in um, the number of patrons that came in. It was awesome. So he was saying that you got to murmur and meditate on it while you pray in tongues. And, and I did this, listen, the first day, and the Lord started showing me amazing things. So I read the prayer. I wrote it out. And I think I took a picture of this and posted it on my Facebook page. So I wrote out those first 14 verses of Deuteronomy 28 so that I could read it every morning. And then after I read it, and I name everybody in my family, declare the blood of Jesus over all, of her, all over all of us. And then I pray in tongues and I let the Lord show me. That's something that, you know, I love tongues. I have tons of teachings out there on tongues. You can go find those. But um, um, when you're praying in tongues, the Lord will begin to speak to you and show you visions and stuff. And I get great visions when I'm praying in tongues. So when I was praying this um, prayer... And then afterward, I was just, I just made notes of everything that the Lord was showing me Well, after I meditated on this and praying. The Lord showed me so many good and awesome things. This pr process is powerful. So he was showing me, um, I saw increase all over the place. I saw 
book sales coming in, just huge amounts of book sales coming in. I saw my bakery being so busy and um, needing an extra person to be there to work. And I saw myself with a microphone speaking or teaching, which, you know, I really am, don't want to do that stuff right now unless the Lord pushes me out and do that. Yes, ma'am, Kathy, that's correct. And um, I saw myself laying hands on people and praying for them. Um, I saw fire going forth out of my mouth. I saw myself um, um, paying off debts and getting titles placed in my hands. Um, I saw somebody in my family that I've been praying for in better health. Um, just all kinds of amazing things. All kinds of amazing things. So that's something that you might want to add. But then again, this is one of those things that I'm telling you. Is that like in order to, to stay in that bubble of communion with the Lord... That is a lot of labor. It takes a lot of time to be praying and reading the Bible and meditating on all this stuff and meditating on the revelation and all that stuff that you receive. It takes time. You know, it's an investment and we still have to work and all that stuff. But guess what? The great thing is if you invest here first, this is like a tithe, then all the rest is going to be blessed. That's the good thing. That's the great thing. If you invest here all of that other stuff will be blessed. And this is another thing that's like when I'm out at my, I have a part-time job. When I'm out at the part-time job where somebody else sets the time that I have to be there and stuff like that, sometimes it's early in the morning and I don't have time to do this. Well, guess what? I have to do it before I go to bed at night. You know, like last night, I did this before I went to bed instead of doing it today because I knew I was going to have to get up and do something right away. Right? So you have to make that investment and it's, a little bit uncomfortable but it it's worth it right the any tithe any seed that you give to the Lord he's going to give you an increase on it as long as you don't drop it as long as you don't uproot it before it's season so it's worth it so that's something to think about you know a lot of people and I know it is it is getting up and praying in the morning is powerful but the thing is it doesn't matter what time if you're diligently seeking the Lord he's going to show up for you so you know if you have to do it before you go to bed so that you can jump up in the morning and go, do it before you go to bed. Do it before you go to bed. Make the investment. Make the investment. It's really worth it. I promise you. It's really worth it. And even though we love church and prophets and all that stuff, I'm telling you, your biggest profit is going to be right here. And, uh, and church doesn't have time to do all the stuff that you have to do to get your seeds to harvest, you know, the seeds that are in your spirit to harvest. They just don't have time. They meet, you know, one, two, three times a week. They just don't have time for, to do all that. You have to do it. You have to do it yourself. All right? Again, I bless you, and I went a little bit over time, but that's how I do it. And um, buy some books over at um, supernaturalubooks.info. Take care.